living good Back in the woods Okay, guys, well, it's a little bit colder today. It's a lot colder today than it was yesterday. It's been raining all night. Um, we had about an inch of rain out here in Ohio um, in this area. I left my set out last night under a tarp, but basically in the open air. So it's probably absorbed a lot of moisture. I learned a couple tricks along the way from a couple primitive skills experts um, that I know. One of them, his name was Josh. Um, and he taught me some things about how to use marginal materials that might be a little bit damp and heat them up ahead of time to make them work. So that's what we're going to discuss today. We're going to try to get another ember out of the set on a different area of the board and we're going to take that thing all the way from ember to transfer to the tinder bundle and bird nest to a flame. So stay with me guys. Okay guys, now this morning we got a whole different ball game. This is a follow-up video from yesterday on, you know, the bow drill set from wood to ember. We got our ember yesterday, we had to make a lot of adjustments. But last night, it poured down rain. We got about an inch or an inch and a quarter of rain last night overnight. That makes things a whole lot different. Now, I had this set underneath the tarp, but it was not, and it's still drizzling a little bit right now. It was underneath the tarp, but it was not secured anywhere where it was dry. So it sucked up a lot of moisture overnight, and now the humidity is really high as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to move underneath the tarp in case it does start raining so we can keep this set as dry as possible. Then we're going to talk about the difference between getting a bow drill ember in wet weather or damp weather versus what we had yesterday, which was sunny and dry, because there's a big difference. So stay with me. We're going to move underneath the tarp over here, and we'll get right at it. Okay, so we moved over here to a dry stump or dryer underneath the tarp. And we've got to talk about adjustments that we need to make today. Number one, we can't use the same notch because it's pretty much burned out and it's going to be wet in there anyway. So we're going to have to make a new, a new hole. All right. We're going to make some adjustments to our spindle in that we're going to carve the point down again where it rides on our handhold. And we're going to clean all this chamfering, all this polish off and all this carbon off of it to get it to be fresh again. So those are the first couple things that we're going to do. So we'll get this carved off, and I can already tell this has got some dampness in it just by the way it feels. And you'll be able to tell that after a while messing with wood and stuff, you'll be able to feel dampness in your wood, and you'll know the difference between a piece of dry wood and something that's got some dampness to it. It's not cutting off as clean, and I don't know how, what, how to explain it exactly to you, but it feels thicker, I guess is the word for it. When I, when I cut into it, it feels a little bit more dense. And that's because it's got some moisture in it. Now let's go ahead and cut this off to a bullnose flat if we can. Because we're basically starting completely over as far as our hole and notch go. So we'll be marrying this up to a brand new situation anyway. Yeah, there's definitely some moisture in this wood. I can feel it. I also have a little crack right here in this spindle, and that is a place for heat to escape. And all of these things, you know, if you have to start another fire with this the next day for some reason because you didn't make char cloth or you couldn't make char cloth, whatever the case may be, things can change dramatically just overnight. Now let's get this point taken care of here. We'll cut it further back and point it out a little bit for our handhold. One of the questions I had yesterday was, did it hurt the handhold area or the handle area of this knife to use it as a handhold? And no, it doesn't. It is G10 material, so it's very strong. It doesn't hurt it a bit. It turns it black, obviously, uh, from the heat. But because it's that G10 material, it wears very, very well. And you're not going to hurt that by using it for a bow drill hand socket. But remember... That's made for an emergency, okay? You're not going to do that every single day or every single fire. You're going to do it in an emergency. You know, if you're going to do it, if you're going to practice your bow drill, I would suggest that you make a handhold for that. I'm just demonstrating the way this knife works so that people can see that it will work in an emergency. Now, I can feel this wood. When I put it against my face or against my skin, it feels very cold. 
and generally what that and I could feel that right there in my palm and what that generally means is that your wood is wet if it's cool to the touch and it's warm outside or warmish outside it's usually wet okay now we got our spindle straightened out pretty much to where we need it to be to start off with again and let's just verify that in our hand in our handhold here that looks good like I said this feels a little bit cold when I touch it to my face or to my skin and it means it's probably damp and the fireboard feels the same so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to need to make a new hole and we're okay with the thickness of this now the change that we're going to have to make because it's damp outside is now I need to trap heat okay I needed to release heat yesterday because it was warm outside very little humidity so I needed a wider notch to collectively get oxygen in there and release heat out into my ember what I need to do today is I need to trap that heat so my notch is going to need to be a little narrower today so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out about the same spot that we were at yesterday as far as our hole goes and then again you know I'll just drill down into it and I'll try to move my board as much as I can and not move my knife so that I don't slip off and cut myself and I can also tell again by the way this wood's cutting that it's damp it just feels completely different I'm actually gonna have to turn my knife in here I think to get this to cut out correctly because it's not shaving off as easy as it was yesterday and I'm just gonna keep my hands and stuff back as far as I can and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna stick this thing in there and just grind on it a little bit just to get it seated in that divot okay now okay now what we're gonna have to do is again we're gonna have to burn this in but because it's damp right now and I know that this wood is damp I'm not gonna get in a big hurry to burn this in I'm gonna burn it in fairly slow so that I can dry the wood out as I'm creating friction and that's important when you have material like this and I was taught this by a guy who is a primitive skills expert um, named Josh but at any rate you need to just give yourself slow steady rhythm to dry that out and then when it starts to burn in you'll be better off and then you have to do the same thing when you're creating your ember you're gonna to have to go slow and create a lot of heat not heat to light your fire but heat to dry out this fireboard then create your dust and then go for the heat to ignite the coal so it's a whole different ball game and it's a lot tougher in wet conditions than it is in dry okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my knife back in the sheath because safety is important and somebody called me out on that yesterday and they were right you know having that blade sheath is a good idea there's no question about that now what we want to do is I got myself up here on a flat rock so I keep myself out of the dampness because the last thing I want to do now is get my pants wet you always want to stay dry in wet conditions now I can do a couple things here I can leave this on the outside and again all of these are just different methods okay I can leave this drill on the outside of my bow or I can put it on the inside of my bow it really doesn't matter you're gonna create a little bit of friction if you have it inside the bow but for sake of this demonstration I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it on the outside just to show you guys the difference now this hole is spent so I'm gonna go ahead and stand on that portion because I know I'm not gonna use that anymore okay I've got to get myself in a good flat spot here on this rock though or I'm gonna be tilting my fireboard all over the place and I don't want to do that for the burning it really doesn't matter but when we start really going for it it's gonna make a difference I feel like my bow flops around a little bit more when I have it on the outside like this you hear that squeaking that's pretty much a telltale indicator that we've got moisture and we're getting some smoke but I'm not going real fast and I'm not putting a lot of downward pressure on it right now I'm just kind of trying to dry that wood out 
as I go. Okay. I've got plenty of burning right there as far as I'm concerned right now to go ahead and cut a notch. And like I said, I wasn't putting a lot of downward pressure on it and it was already burning and smoking. So now we're going to trim this off and we're going to cut our notch. But our notch is going to be a little different today than it was yesterday because we want to trap more heat. I need to concentrate more heat because of the moist conditions. So today my notch will be a little bit thinner than it was yesterday and it will probably be about this wide today compared to yesterday. So I'll go ahead and cut that in with a multi-tool here. And you can see the difference already in the width of this notch. It's a lot thinner than it was yesterday. And again, that's because I need to trap that heat in there. All of these things are important to understand when you're doing this. Now, because I'm making this notch thinner today than I did yesterday, I really need to make sure that I can get oxygen in from the bottom. So now that chamfer we talked about on the bottom here becomes that much more important because I'm starving of the oxygen a little bit to trap the heat, but I've still got to let oxygen in. If I don't let oxygen in, we're going to have a problem. So I'm going to chamfer this off on the bottom side so I can let some heat in. You can see I'm cutting that all the way around just a little bit to let some oxygen in there. And that wood's definitely wet this morning. There's no question about that. Or damp anyway, let's put it that way. Okay, so now my notch is a lot smaller today than it was yesterday. And like I said, that's because I need to trap heat today. It's wet. I've got to trap the heat. Okay, now again, our tinder bundle and our bird nest is the key element to this fire, okay? That preparation of that is key, okay? And you can see I've got some shredded inner bark in here, some dried grasses, and then on the back side, I've got some sticks, okay? That's a tinder bundle. The bird nest is what's down inside that tinder bundle, and it's made from shredded inner bark of the same tulip poplar okay that part is of the utmost importance because if you're going to exert the energy and the time to make an ember with a bow drill especially in conditions that aren't the greatest you only want to do it one time because once you get that ember you've got to be able to capitalize on it you're spending too many calories too much energy and too much hydration to make this happen to let this be the cause of your failure now, some of this stuff is damp. That's okay. I put the damp stuff toward the back so the heat will rise through the bundle and dry it out. And any sticks that are damp, I put the dampest end down toward the bottom and the driest end up here at the top. Okay? So let's get after it. All right, I've moved this flat rock over here now. So I got a place to put my legs, my knees, and all that stuff. And nothing's going to get wet. I can go ahead and collect my ember right here on this rock it's not going to be a big deal again i'm going to try to do this toward you guys so you can see what i'm doing okay i've got a dry drier piece of wood here that i'm going to try to stand on with my foot to keep my foot off this fireboard like i said you want to protect that fireboard at all costs because you don't know if you're going to have to use it again so let's get our bow loaded up here and like I said we'll leave it on the outside this time we'll see how it works out for us 
It may work out better. It may not. It's not my preferred method, but I'm all about trying new stuff too. Okay. Let's get this leather strap out of our way here. One reason not to have a lanyard on your knife. Let's get locked into our shin where we belong. Make sure we got everything right before we do this. Okay. Now, like I said, I'm going slow here because I want to heat this board up. But I'm using full strokes of this bow all the way. And that's important. Now I'm going to slightly put some pressure on it to try to get some dust built up in that notch like we talked about. But I'm still going pretty slow. Once I see that my notch is getting full, that's when I'm going to go for it. Again, I'm using the whole bow because I'll get more revolutions that way for my energy. Okay, we've got a number there on the first time. But it looks like it's going to go out. Okay. Again, if it goes out, we just do it again. Okay, guys, I apologize. Um, first, I ran out of space on my card, then my battery went dead. So... I had to erase some segments on the card. Had to run about five, six hundred yards to fetch another battery. And uh, now I'm not sure where I left off. But anyway, so our first try was bum. No good. We saved our dust. We have taken all the polish off of the front or the downside of our spindle and we've repointed the top. We've tightened up our bowstring to make sure that we have got everything, all the variables taken care of that could have possibly caused a problem to begin with. And we've widened our notch just a little bit. I've got my bird nest standing by off to the side, and we're ready to try it again with my wet boots from crossing the creek. Another variable. Murphy's awesome. Okay, so we'll get loaded up here. Now we're really at a heavy start over point now because we <laughs> left for so long, we've let our board cool down. Everything's cooled down again now. Whereas if we could have taken advantage of it rather quickly, we would have had... A hot board to work with. Now we've got a cold board we're working with. So pretty much it's a start over at this point. Although we do have some dust down there to play with. Okay, you definitely have an ember there now. Again, now we got all kinds of time. Move things out of our way. 
Make sure our spindle's safe, our board's safe from any moisture. And just let it sit there and cook until it coagulates into a large ember. I'm going to adjust this camera a little bit so you can see it real good here. And you can see the windward side is the side that's going to develop first. We're going to fan it. We want plenty of air getting to that coal. You see the wind's blowing across it from this direction. Our coal's developing on the side, on the leeward side there. I said windward, I meant leeward side. You can look at what direction the smoke's blowing. Now that's in our favor. Yesterday when we did this, we had the wind blowing against the back of the fireboard. So we weren't getting oxygen into that coal as good as we did today. And you see the wind just changed directions now. But the top of that thing and the sides getting really black now and it's coagulating into a good ember. Now what we want to do is we're going to transfer this ember to a tinder bundle. So let me zoom out. Get the camera picked up here as best I can. I'm going to back out a little bit here and zoom out if I can. That's yeah, not going to let me zoom out. Okay, well, we're stuck for the moment, so we're going to have to stop the camera and zoom out. Okay, now we're back in action here. And you can see our tinder sitting there smoldering away. So let's get a good angle here somewhere where we can transfer this ember into a tinder bundle and see what we can do here camera picked up high enough that you can see me the ember and the tinder bundle at the same time if I can okay so now you always want to bring your bundle as close to your ember as you can get it and what I'll do is I will pick my ember up with my knife blade most of the time and set it on top of my knife blade and collect all the dust I can possibly get and I'll transfer that very gently into my bird nest just like that put my knife away I have still got all kinds of time here okay and I'm gonna try to come over here where you guys can see what's going on taking my time That material's wet. I'm gonna keep adding oxygen to that as I can. Because the goal now is to get these sticks on fire. Now I've got something here that I can play with. Okay? I got something that's gonna give me a little bit of sustainability to actually make a fire.
Okay, guys, so <clears throat> today we took a set that had been sitting out overnight underneath the tarp, but in the rain and humidity, and we made another bow drill fire with it all the way to a flame and set a bird nest and tender bundle on fire. The lessons learned from that are, A, it's not impossible to do it with damp materials or in high humidity. It's just a different technique. You have to make sure that you narrow your notch down a little bit to trap the heat, you have to make sure that you warm your board up good before you even start because you need to get as much moisture out of that board as you can. Now, the fact that I failed the first time, ended up having to walk away for a battery and take some stuff off the card and took, you know, five, six, seven, eight minutes to do all that stuff, gave me time to breathe and relax before I did it again. And that can be a good thing in a survival situation because if you get excited and something's not working right and you get frustrated, Chances are the second time you try it, it's probably not going to work any better unless you stop and think and pre-plan and understand what you did wrong, what you need to fix, and then get your energy back and try again. Because if you burn yourself out trying to do things over and over again because you can't effectively make it happen, then you're going to be worse off than better off. So maybe that break did us some good. The other thing that you have to realize with bow drill is 95% of it is form. You can take marginal materials and get a coal out of them eventually if you have good form. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. I thank you very much for your support. I thank you for all your views, for what you do for myself, my family, and my school. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.